Let's take a look at transactions and how useful they can be with debugging in Brownie. We're going to work within our Margarita project, which is a new name for it. And first we're gonna do a little housekeeping on our comp test. Now that we have a new name, let's change token to Margarita. And we are going to work within our Margarita tests folder. I'm gonna work on our minting tests. First things first, we have to change token to Margarita. This is now inheriting the Margarita token. And we're gonna write a test which we know is going to fail. This is just for the purpose of demonstration. It's not usually useful to write tests that are going to fail. What we're going to say is we are going to see if accounts is one, which has no claim to this. Every Margarita token when deployed is owned by account zero. We're gonna see if accounts one can call the Margarita dot transfer from to take money from accounts zero and deposit it into accounts one, the amount of one times 10 to the 21st. And this will be sent from accounts one. So since accounts one has no access to this, if we now assert that the margarita balance of accounts one is equal to one E21, this test should fail. run this on brownie test just tests mint it's going to collect the three tests we have and the third one is in fact going to fail let's introduce you now to interactive mode we didn't know why this test was failing and mind you this is a common problem that a lot of people run into in beginning blockchain development if we pass the interactive flag this is going to drop us right on the console in the exact state at which it failed and allow us to take a look and interact with the contract as it exists. And here's where the transaction is really useful. So we see now that we are on our console. It's everything we expect. We have access to the Margarita token has been imported, where Alice still has a balance. When we land in this state, Brownie automatically creates the TX variable, which is a transaction receipt. Transaction receipt has a lot of amazing built-in properties that allow you to debug what might have gone wrong. We'll start by looking at info. And this is gonna tell us that the transaction was mined, but there's an insufficient allowance. Probably sounds a little familiar, doesn't it? You want to see this as a specific, just revert message, will be assigned to tx.revertMessage if it exists. Now we could use the full trace if we ever need all the information in the world, this is going to tell us every single opcode and what happened. There's a much friendlier way of looking at it, which is the TX variable comes with a call trace built in. And also the TX traceback function is gonna provide a Pythonic style error message. This is telling me that the call trace failed when it went to contracts token.sol line 119 on the transfer from require allowed from message sender greater than or equal to value insufficient allowance. So this was an intentional error message. And if we look down here, we can see the context of what went wrong. And here we are running the transfer from function and it requires that the allowance has been set. Allowance can be checked is simply did the owner sign off on authorizing a transaction? And this is done by calling the approve function. If we go back here and we try testing first, approving the transaction, then sending it, we're going to have better results. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a new transaction object. 
by calling the approve function, if this block is mined, it's going to pass the transaction receipt object back to approval TX for my convenience. This appears to have been mined. Accounts one is now authorized to make transactions up to one times 10 to the 21st from account zero. Approval TX now has everything. We can call a trace on a successful transaction and see that token approve was called. We can get info on this transaction. Notice there was no error message. There's no trace back. There should be an event fired. This was what's emitted upon approval within the Solidity smart contract. And here we get access to it. And there's also a logs function you can call on it to get a bit more data. Now, if we call Margarita and we transfer from accounts zero into accounts one in the amount of one times 10 to the 21st, we'll send this from accounts one, and this has been confirmed. Now you'll notice I didn't assign this to a transaction. So I have a transaction hash, but how do I convert this into a transaction receipt? There's a couple of ways. One is that every, every single transaction is stored in the history variable, which you'll have access to. If I run this, I will see the full log of every transaction I ran. The first is the contract's creation. followed by helps if I use the right function name, the failed attempt at transfer one, again, usually helps to write the right variable name, approve, The most recent transaction, aka negative one, appears like this. There's also a useful way if you have the transaction hash to assign this to an object. You can use a built-in object called chain. Chain has a lot of great properties. One of the most useful ones is I can create my transfer TX is equal to chain dot get transaction and here i need to simply paste any transaction hash and it's going to assign this to transfer tx here i can get the info call trace which looks a bit more complicated because this required using safe math trace back should be blank there should be an event fired for the successful transfer. And here's what the logs look like. And so we figured out how we can actually solve our issue. If we go back and edit our test slightly, and we first provide approval, should now expect that this test will pass. Thank you, transactions.